Hi there, this is Scott Duffy, and in this video, I want to answer a frequently asked question about the Azure 70 532 exam. In this video, the question that I received from a student was What are the advantages of using Azure functions over normal web apps or API apps for that matter? That's a great question. I really love this question because if you can describe the differences between two Azure services, then you've come a long way in terms of being able to pass either the 7532 exam or the 7535 exam. Okay, so you should go in there knowing what the differences between any two very similar services are. Why would you choose a virtual machine? Why would you use a web app? Why would you go the serverless model, etc.? So let's start with the basics. You may have heard of Azure Functions or not heard of them, but they're part of Microsoft Azure's serverless offering. Now, serverless is this new paradigm shift in application design. That means that you pay for things by consumption, that you have absolutely no influence over the hardware, uh, scaling is done for you, etc. It is sort of the, the hot new thing. So one advantage of using the serverless and functions model is that it's relatively new compared to web apps model even. So let's talk about functions specifically. For Microsoft Azure, you can create functions directly in the browser. And so you code them there, you test them there. You're working within the Azure portal browser window, and you can paste your code there and, and do all sorts of things you need to do. There's no separate development environment. You do not need to develop on your local and do a whole deployment and all that wonderful stuff. It also supports additional programming languages that web apps or API apps don't support. For instance, JavaScript. So you can create functions in JavaScript that do stuff as opposed to then having to write stuff in C sharp, for instance. It has a built-in integration to a lot of Azure services. So if you need to integrate with Azure blobs, there's a configuration tab for that. And then you basically turn on the configuration and then that variable to allow you to access the blob account is available to your program. You don't have to set up all that integration like you do with the Azure SDK. Microsoft takes care of scaling for you. So you create your function and as traffic increases, Microsoft should intelligently handle adding additional server resources on its own. You do not have to set up scaling yourself and you don't have to set up the servers. It's also, like I said, a pay per use model. And so you get so many million calls for free and then you pay so many cents for the next million calls. If you're using logic apps for the workflow, uh, at using functions is a natural combination. You can go between logic apps into functions, back into logic apps, back into functions. They work well together. It's also designed for smaller atomic work. And so I wouldn't consider creating a function that's extremely complex and got thousands of lines of code. And if you're going to need that, then you may want to use a web app. Let's talk about web apps then. So those are the advantages of the functions. So you may have an existing workflow for code deployments, source control, GitHub, um, then using web apps and API apps, it's just going to fit right in with your existing workflow. Uh, using functions, like I said, if you develop them in the browser and test them in the browser, then you'd have to actually do extra work to get that code out of Azure and into a source control system. Tracking changes becomes harder etc. If you want to create more complicated apps, like I said, um, then you, you would might want to do a web app versus just a function. Although the idea with functions is to break it up into logic apps and then use multiple functions to replicate what one app might do. If you need a finer control, so web apps actually do more things such as uh, you can do stuff directly in APIs and working with files on the file system, etc. And finally, if you do want to control scaling, so some people do want to run um, the ability to add more instances uh, by PowerShell scripts and be able to scale that down, knowing that traffic spike is coming and being able to scale in advance, that might be something that you do want. So web apps are great for that kind of level of control. Well, that was the question, functions versus web apps. Uh, if you've got thoughts on that, you can certainly leave a comment in this video. As I said, my name is Scott Duffy. I do have a number of courses on Udemy, so check me out. The link is in the description below. 
I have more than 40,000 students in my Azure courses and now more than 80,000 students in all my courses. Thank you very much for watching and talk to you again.